What's going on guys? The CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at another aluminum heat sink for the Raspberry Pi 4. Recently I did a review on the Ice Tower, which is an amazing heat sink, but it is overkill. If you haven't seen my video on the Ice Tower for the Raspberry Pi 4, I will leave a link in the description. As you can see, I mean, it's a massive tower cooler for your Raspberry Pi. But after adding this, we no longer have a super small single board computer. So I figured I'd go ahead and pick up something a little cheaper and a little more low profile. This is known as the iUniker Raspberry Pi Heatsink Fan. On Amazon, it's compatible with the Raspberry Pi 2, 3, or 3B+, but it does work with the Raspberry Pi 4. And you can pick these up anywhere from $7 to $10. So there's been a lot of talk about the Raspberry Pi 4 overheating, and I really think it's been blown out of proportion by the media, because if you've ever messed around with the Raspberry Pi 2, the 3, or the 3B+, those also get hot. They will reach thermal throttle and underclock the CPU. So technically, those overheat also. And with the Raspberry Pi 4, we have a more powerful chip with no heat sink on it whatsoever from the factory. And yes, the CPU does get quite hot, but the Raspberry Pi Foundation has put safeguards in place. When it hits 80 degrees Celsius, it will underclock itself, in turn, cooling the chip back off. But in that moment, when the CPU underclocks itself, we do lose performance. It will underclock itself all the way to 600 megahertz, and the CPU comes out of the box at 1.5. So we lose a lot of performance. I'd rather just throw a little heatsink on here and keep as much performance for as long as possible. So this is it, the iUniker Raspberry Pi heatsink fan. It consists of an aluminum 40 millimeter heatsink with a 40 millimeter fan screwed to the top. It's five volts, super, super quiet. I mean, I can't even hear it unless I put it up to my ear. And in my testing, which we'll see later in the video, it definitely keeps the Raspberry Pi 4 cool. It comes with 3M double-sided thermal adhesive, and it also comes with two extra heat sinks. Since this was designed for the Raspberry Pi 3 and the 3B+, it comes with a heat sink for the Ethernet chip and a heat sink for the RAM that was located on the bottom of the Raspberry Pi 3. We're not going to need these for the Raspberry Pi 4, but you might be able to find a use for them down the road. Installation is a breeze. You're just going to pull off the backing for this double-sided thermal adhesive. Stick one side to the heat sink, and then the whole heat sink's going to stick right on top of the Raspberry Pi 4 CPU. It's not going to go anywhere. This adhesive is really good. And now all we need to do is plug the fan in. On the Raspberry Pi 4's GPIO output, there's two voltages we can use. 3.3 volts, which they say is quiet mode, and 5 volts, which is full speed mode. I'm using 5 volts here, and it's still super quiet like I mentioned. And if you really wanted to, you could take the extra heat sink and place it on the Raspberry Pi 4's RAM chip, but I'm not even going to worry about it. So now it's time to see how this thing performs. I'm going to be facing it off against the Raspberry Pi 4 with no heat sink, a 20mm aluminum heat sink, a 20mm aluminum heat sink with a 40mm fan, and the ice tower with the fan on and the fan off. Before we get into the results, I just want to give you a quick overview of my testing method. First up, I'm using the same exact Raspberry Pi in all of these tests. It's a Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte model. The first test I did was just grab the idle temps after it booted up and sat for five minutes. Then I opened up the Chromium browser, went to YouTube, and played a 720p video for five minutes straight. After that, I extracted a 1.1 gigabyte image. It's actually the Raspbian Buster image that I'm running right now. And then finally, an extreme test. It's a 20 minute sysbench stress test and I also have logging in the background. So every 30 seconds, it'll give me a readout on the temperature for 20 minutes straight. By the end, I can tell you exactly how hot this thing got in this test. Keep in mind that this is an extreme test and most Raspberry Pis will never see this much load on the CPU for this long. The results are in and the iUniker heatsink is actually doing a really good job. Keep in mind that all of these temperatures are in Celsius and my ambient room temperature is 23.333 degrees Celsius or 74 degrees Fahrenheit. At idle with no heat sink, 54 degrees Celsius. With the 20 millimeter aluminum heat sink, 49 degrees. The same 20 millimeter aluminum heat sink with a 40 millimeter fan was 36 and the iUniker matched that. But the ice tower with the fan on and off were much cooler in all of these tests. For YouTube video playback, the iUniker was actually one degree hotter than the 20 millimeter aluminum heatsink and 20 millimeter fan. Kind of the same thing here with the extraction test, but it was two degrees hotter. But when we moved over to the stress test, the iUniker actually beat out the 20 millimeter heatsink with 40 millimeter fan. And I think this has to do with the surface area of the aluminum heatsink on the iUniker. 
As long as you can keep the CPU temps on the Raspberry Pi 4 under 80 degrees Celsius, you'll be good to go. When it hits 80, it underclocks and you lose performance. So the iUniker definitely works. If you're going to be using your Raspberry Pi 4 for extended periods of time, I personally recommend some type of heatsink, even if it's a passively cooled 20 millimeter aluminum heatsink with no fan whatsoever, it will help out in the long run. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in picking up the iUniker Raspberry Pi heatsink fan, I will leave links in the description. A couple different vendors are selling them from $7 to $10, and I personally think it's a great choice if you don't want to go with a giant heatsink like the Ice Tower. A lot of people have been saying that the Raspberry Pi 4 is flawed because it overheats. I think the main issue here is that the Raspberry Pi Foundation just won't admit that you should put a little heatsink on the Raspberry Pi 4. This chip could run all day at 80 degrees Celsius, but it's going to lack in performance because it has to underclock itself to keep that temp. If you guys have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that like button or maybe subscribe to the channel. But like always, thanks for watching.